Uh, today, I'll talk about conditional disclosure of secret via nonlinear reconstruction. I'm Tian Ren. This is joint work with Vinod and Hotek. So, you have heard the talk about conditional disclosure of secret or CDS already. Here's a quick recap of the definition. Uh, there are three parties Alice, who hold the predicate, Bob, who, who hold the input I, and Charlie, who knows both F and I. Alice and Bob also know a bit secret, and they want to disclose the secret to Charlie if and only if fi equals one. So this model is like multi-party computation, but with minimum communication. Alice and Bob cannot talk to each other, but they share a random, random tape. This random tape is private in the sense that Charlie cannot read it. Alice and Bob also each send a message to Charlie, they cannot receive any message from Charlie. After this, Charlie should be able to learn a secret if fi equals to one. For privacy, when fi equals zero, Charlie should learn nothing about the secret. We are aiming for information theoretical security. Therefore, like when fi equals zero, the joint distribution of the message should be simulatable by a simulator who doesn't know the secret. So far, it's the same as the previous talk, but in this one, we stick to the case where the Alice input, you should consider that as a truth table. So Charlie learned the secret if and only if the i's index in the truth table is one. Okay. CDS is very useful. Uh, in the paper, who, uh, uh, in paper by uh, Gertner, Ishai, Kuchilevis, and uh, uh, Milken, uh, it was used to protect data privacy in peer schemes. It also implies secret sharing on forbidden graph. And it also looks like one-time attribute-based encryption and it can be lifted to a multi-time attribute-based encryption. It's also an interesting primitive on its own. So let's have a toy construction to see how it works. Here, the privacy is just, oh, sorry, the private uh, random tape, we read n bit of random bit. Bob, Bob, he sent the secret bit, x or the s random bit. This is like a one-time pad. Then what Alice do is natural, he sent or the random bit rj such that di equals one, or dj equals one. So the secret is one time padded by ri, and ri is leaked by Alice if and only if di equals one, so we have both privacy and the correctness. In this scheme, the Bob's communication is minimized to one bit, Alice's communication is at most n bit. When di equals one, Bob reconstructs the secret by a very simple, simpler, a simple way. He just XOR the secret, uh, the bit sent by Bob, and one bit sent by Alice. We have another toy construction. This one, Alice communication complexity is minimized to one bit. Alice sent the secret XOR with or the random bit RJ such that R, uh, DJ is zero. And for Bob, Bob sent all the random bit except RI. So you can see here, there's only one unsend secret bit, which is ri. ri is used to encrypt the secret if and only if DJ, uh, di is zero. Therefore, you, we also have both privacy and correctness. In this case, when Charlie wants to reconstruct the secret when di is one, he also do something very simple. He took the bit sent by Alice, XOR with some of the bit sent by Bob. So in the previous two examples, Charlie reconstructs the secret by x or some of the bit he received, which is a linear function mod two. We said a CDS have linear reconstruction. If Bob reconstructs the secret by apply a linear function on the message he received. Now already you have seen two construction for CDS with linear reconstruction, the communication complexity with n1 and 1n. You can do a balancing between them 
and get an other CDS, also linear reconstruction, but the communication complexity is square rooted. This is also the best known before us. Okay, Gay, Crenitis, and uh, V, they prove that if the reconstruction is linear, square root n is actually the best you can get. In the same paper, they show a log n lower bound for unrestricted reconstru reconstruction. So as you can see, there is an exponential gap between the lower bound and the best reconstruction, a uh, best construction. If you want to improve it and get a better CDS, you need the reconstruction to use some nonlinear technique. So here comes our works. First, we present a CDS with cube root and reconstruction, a uh, cube root and communication complexity, and the quadratic reconstruction. This is also tied in the sense that uh, cube root n is optimal for, for quadratic reconstruction. We get another construction such that, okay, this time we have subpolynomial communication complexity. But as the trade off, the reconstruction is more complicated. So you should get the idea now that, okay, we need nonlinear techniques, but where are they coming from? It turns out like the correct place to looking for nonlinear technique is from two server information theoretical private information retrieval. So in two server peer, there are two server, each hold a table, and the client hold the index. The client want to learn the S index in the table without leaking his index. Okay, you can see it's somehow similar to CDS. There are three parties. There are information circle. There is a database. There is an index, and also there is a square root and communication construction. Uh, uh, construction, yeah. But uh, one big difference is that we have better scheme for peer. For peer, we have a cube root and communication complexity scheme, and also recently, Divorgopi. They, uh, they construct the first subpolynomial communication complexity here. So natural question is that, okay, can we import techniques from peer to CDS? Okay, Beimer, Ishai, Kumarison, Kushilevis, they do something similar. They import technique from four server peer to PSM. PSM is kind of similar to CDS. Encouraged by previous result, we also import techniques from CDS, uh, from here. We construct, construct CDS, this two with cube root and communication capacity and subpolynomial communication capacity. Actually, we have a quite general transformation from two server peer to CDS, as long as the peer satisfies some mailed uh, properties. Let's see. Uh, first, a quick definition of peer, two server, a client. Client knows the index. Client generate query and send to the server. Server answers. Client get the answers. And the client learns the S entry. For privacy, each server individually learns nothing about the uh, index. Okay. So we would like gradually transfer this picture to a CDS. The first thing I'd like to do is to split the client into two pieces. The one on the top right he only taking care of generating queries and send to server. The one on the bottom left, he get the answer from the server and he output the ice index. Okay. So the first property we assume on the peer is that the queries actually forms an additive secret sharing of a vector ui. Here ui to un is just some public, everyone know, a vector. Okay, the server answered the query. I don't know, I don't care how he do it. Let HD denote how the server answered the query. Okay. Our second assumption is like the client get the S entry by doing some linear work. In particular, okay, assuming you are the client, you get the answer, which is a vector on its own. You interpret it with UI. You subtract the two in the product, the difference would be di. 
So you may ask, oh, this looks quite specialized. But uh, actually, it's not. As long as you have a peer where the client output as entry by doing something linear on the answer he receives, you can transform this peer to a peer uh, with this e equation. The, uh, the total communication com complexity would increase a bit, but only by constant factor. Okay. Assuming we have both these properties, we are ready to transform this peer to a CDS scheme. First thing, in CDS, there's a secret bit. We need to embed it somewhere. We gave the bit to the top client. So the client would fall in. If the bit is one, nothing changes. If the bit is zero, he actually sends the same query to both servers. Everyone else in this graph, they just pretend nothing has happened and do the same thing. So what would the bottom client output here? It's actually output as times di. When, is, uh, when the secret bit i equals one, he just output di as previously. When the secret bit is zero, he's actually subtracting two identical in the project. Therefore, the output is zero. So putting them together, the output is i times di. Oh, i times di is actually what we need for CDS. Assuming you are Charlie, you get s times di. What does it tell you? When di is x1, it gives you the secret. When di is zero, it hides the secret. Okay, now it's my favorite part. So the top server is actually Alice. Knowing the database, good. The top client is actually Bob. Knowing index, secret, good. There's no need to sign the random string to Alice. They can simply read it from their private random string. Both client and server in the bottom are Charlie. So let's merge the two to Charlie. This, this is how the picture looks like. Uh, let's check this CDS schemes already. Uh, is it correct? It is. From Alice message, you can compute the blue inner product. From the Bob's message, you can compute the green inner product. Subtract them, get STI, which, which is what Charlie should learn. Okay, so it is private. Assume you are the simulator. You want to simulate Charlie's view without knowing secret S. Okay, Bob's message, cool. It's simulatable, it's just a random string. Uh, but you don't know how to simulate Alice one. Actually, Alice message alone, you can simulate it because it doesn't even contain S. But the drawing distribution is hard. But now let's have a daydream. Alice message is used to compute this inner product. What if Alice just sent this inner product? It's just a one bit. And actually, when di equals zero, from this equation, you can compute what Alice would are going to send. So this is actually simulatable. Uh, but very sadly, Alice cannot send this in the product because Alice cannot compute it. Alice doesn't know I, doesn't know UI. Bob knows I, Bob knows UI. So Bob can help. So the current situation is like, uh, Alice knows a vector, Bob knows a vector. They want Charlie to learn the inner product without leaking extra information. It's doable. It's very, actually very simple. There's ac actually very simple protocol for this. Alice send a one-time path of his, her vector. And Bob, Bob send the inner product between the path and his vector. What does Charlie do? Charlie actually also knows this Bob's vector. So Charlie do an inner product between UI and what Alice sent, subtract what Bob sent, then Charlie would get this inner product. So we still have correctness. So how about privacy? Alice message is easy to simulate, it's just a random string. And again, the extra bit sent by Bob, you can compute it from the equation at the bottom. So actually, you also have privacy. So now, actually, you have the transformation already. Uh, but in this transformation, we assume two properties. 
which is listed in the top of the slides. Okay, I want to make some comment here. The first one, we actually don't need the first property. Without, prop for, without this property, the transformation would look ugly, but it still survives. The second thing, name all the peer, two server peer you know, they satisfy both property in the top. Therefore, they can be transferred to CDS with same communication complexity. And uh, one more thing, it's like, if you remember, like Charlie, he acts uh, act both thing as the server and the client at the bottom. Therefore, his complexity is at least as much as the server in the peer. So for cube root n peer, the server's complexity, the server needs to compute a quadratic function. So when it transforms to a CDS, like Charlie needs to do quadratic evaluation. And sim similarly, in a sub-polynomial peer, the server do something complicated, high degree. Then when transferred to CDS, Charlie also need to evaluate a complicated function. So this is, okay, let's have a concrete one. Let's see how we transform the sub-polynomial peer to CDS. So what does the vector UI looks like? The vector UI is actually just a, a, it's called matching vector family. It's a bunch of short vectors such that in the product the vector with itself is zero, in the product the vector with some, some other vector is non-zero. And if you can find better, like shorter matching vectors, then you would have better peer and also get better CDS. And the server, the, okay, uh, what I want you to observe from this one, it's like this is what the server does uh, in the uh, sub-polynomial peer, and also like uh, this is what the Charlie need to evaluate. He need to compute the inner product on the exponent, which is very high degree polynomial if it's not written on the exponent. Okay. So that's not technical part I want to say. Uh, to summary, we get two, uh, two new CDS schemes. One with cube root and communication capacity, which also tied for quadratic reconstruction. One with sub polynomial communication capacity. The technique borrowed from peer. If you have a new peer, it's very likely you can also transform it to a better CDS. And if you know forbidden graph, our result also implies better forbidden graph, uh, so also uh, uh, implies better secret sharing schemes on forbidden graph. Uh, so this is how the picture looks like. There used to be an exponential gap here. We somehow narrowed it down but uh, there's uh, still room left, and the uh, big question is, what's the right answer? Thank you very much. <laughs>